This is Nick with logosbynick.com and in today's tutorial I'll be demonstrating how you can create these circular arrows using Adobe Illustrator. So I'm going to go ahead and get started here in Illustrator by creating a new document. And the size I'm going to use is a custom 1280 by 1280 pixels. Go ahead and click create. And the first thing we want to do is set up our document so that we're all working with a similar view. So to do that I'm going to first go to view and where it says snap to pixel I'm going to turn that off and back under the view drop down anything else that's checked go ahead and turn it off except for snap to point snap to points the only thing we want checked that we can close out of that and to get these three panels open up here just go to window and make sure you have color gradient and pathfinder selected to have those three panels visible and to get started the first thing we're going to do is create an ellipse so i'm going to come over here to the uh, rectangle tool and click and hold on that menu and select ellipse and I'll just go ahead and click and drag to create an ellipse like that, like an egg-shaped ellipse that's taller than it is wide. I'll flip the two colors around and I'm going to go ahead up here and turn off the stroke. And then I'll come over here to the opacity. I'll bring that down about in half and then click out of that. Oops. And what I want to do now is grab this select tool. And with this uh, ellipse selected, I'm going to go to object, path, offset path. And I want to offset this by about 20 pixels. I'm going to go ahead and click preview so we can see how it looks. And something about there looks pretty good. Yours may differ based on your screen resolution and based on how big or small you made your ellipse. But generally, um, something like that in that proportion is pretty good. I'll go ahead and click OK to finalize that. And I'm going to make that, I'm going to make that red. And what I'll do now is I'll grab the select tool. I'm already, I actually already have it selected. I'm going to hold alt and click and drag this circle here, this ellipse to create another copy of it. And then while I'm holding alt in the click, I'm going to hold shift to lock it onto the horizontal axis and bring it out to about here like that over to the left a little bit. And once we've done that, um, let me click off of the graphic, deselect everything. I'm going to grab the pen tool. And I'm going to snap the cursor onto the top node of this red ellipse and bring the line over to the top node of this other, other red ellipse. And I'll bring the line down here and then over here and then back to the starting point. And then I'll go back to the select tool and then I'm going to hold shift and click on that red ellipse over there to the left. And under the pathfinder menu, I'm going to click the button that says unite. And then I'll take the opacity of that, bring that down back in half. Then I'm going to right click on this and go to arrange, send to the back. So it's layered beneath everything. And what I'm going to do now is I just want to create a duplicate copy of this. So I'm going to hold alt and click and drag this off to the left, then hold shift to lock it onto the vertical axis and bring this outside of the page border like that. We're just going to use this in a few minutes. We're just going to put that off to the side right now. I'll click off of that to deselect everything. I'm going to click on this original red ellipse right here. I'm just going to make that blue so we could easily differentiate it. Uh, let me go to File, Document Color Mode, and just make sure I have RGB set. I was previously using CMYK, so uh, this is only going to be used for screens. CMYK is for print. We're going to be using this digitally on screen, so I'm going to change this to RGB so we get some brighter, some more pop to these colors. And once we've done that, um, I'm going to take this, I'm going to create a duplicate copy of this blue ellipse. I'm just going to hold Alt and click and drag it to create a duplicate copy. And then I'll hold Control on the keyboard and grab this top node and snap it back onto the top of this ellipse over here, just like that. And then I'll hold shift and click on the red shape and click on the button in the Pathfinder menu that says minus front, just like that. And that's going to subtract that shape so we're left with this little crescent shape right here, which is what we're going for. And once we've done that, uh, you know what? Uh, let me take this copy. Let me take this copy and just press delete on the keyboard. We actually don't need that. This is the one I wanted to copy of right here. I'm going to hold alt and click and drag that out of the page like that. And again, hold shift to lock it onto the horizontal axis and just put that on the outside over there. And then what I'll do next is I'm just going to click and drag over these two ellipses right here to select them both. And I'm going to click the button that says minus front. So it ends up being just a ring right there. And what I want to do next is grab the pen tool. Let's deselect everything by hitting Control, Shift, and A. And I want to come up here about two, about one third of the way down from the shape right here and go ahead and click to create a point. Then hold Shift and bring the line straight through like that. You know what? Maybe I'll bring that down a little lower. Let me go back to the Select tool and I'll just press Delete on the keyboard to get rid of that. 
I'll go back to the pen tool. I'll bring this maybe a little more than one third of the way, maybe somewhere like that. I'll hold shift and just bring that line straight through and then click and then just click around to bring this back to the starting point. And I'll go to the select tool. Let me click on that shape and then bring the opacity of that down in half. And what I want to do next is click and drag over all of those to select everything right there, except for this shape out here. We're going to leave this alone for now. And what I want to do next is go to the shape builder tool, which is over here. The keyboard shortcut is shift M. And with the shape builder tool, I'm going to hold alt and click all of these shapes here on the bottom, just like that to get rid of those. And once we've done that, we can go back to the select tool, click off of the, uh, the graphic to deselect everything. And I want to take this red shape right here and hold alt and click and drag that to the right to create a duplicate copy of that. And what I'll do next is I'll hold, I'll click and hold on the uh, rotate tool till we get our fly out menu and I'm going to select the reflect tool. And I'm just going to click and drag this around to rotate it 180 degrees. I'm going to hold shift to lock it onto those axes like that. So we have it flipped around like that. Then I'm going to hold control and grab this note over here. Actually, you know what? We've got to go to the select tool first. Then I'll hold control, grab this node right here and snap this onto this corner node of the blue shape right there, just like that. And once we've done that, we could send that to the bottom by right clicking it and going to arrange, send to the back. And what I want to do now is just zoom in over this top part right here. I'm going to hold alt and roll up the mouse wheel. If you notice this red shape right here, there's a little bit of it sticking out. I'm going to delete, I'm going to get rid of that. So uh, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to grab the pen tool and I'm just going to create a shape going through here through that red, through that blue shape and then outside of here back to the starting point grab the select tool hold shift click on the red object over here to the bottom right and again minus front just like that and we're gonna have to send that to the back again instead of right clicking it and going to arrange send to back what you could do is use the keyboard shortcut which is what you see here is shift control and the left bracket so I'm gonna do that I'm gonna hit control shift and the left bracket to send that to the back then I'll hold alt and roll down the mouse wheel to zoom out what I want to do next is I'm gonna click and drag over everything here and bring the opacity of it all the way up and next, I'm going to create the head of the arrow right here. So to do that, I'm going to click and drag over the ellipse tool, and I'm going to choose the polygon tool. And if you notice, when you click and drag the polygon tool, it's going to create a polygon with, um, I guess, six sides. I'm going to press, while holding the click, I'm going to press down on the arrow to bring that down to three, because we want three sides. And then I'm going to hold shift to lock it onto the horizontal axis like that. And then I'm going to bring the cursor outside of the object out here until the cursor turns into a rotate icon and then just rotate this around and then hold shift to lock it until the flat side of the uh, triangle is up top. Then I'll grab the select tool, take this bottom node and just bring that up to scale that down like that. Bring this down here. I'm going to hold control and grab this node and snap it onto this node right there. And then I'll just hold, I'll just click and drag this while holding shift to the left a little bit and put this over here like that. So now we have the uh, head of the arrow there. So the next step would be to let's take this object right here and I'm going to hold alt and click and drag it and then hold shift. So it locks onto the horizontal axis just like that and bring this out about this far. And I'm going to make this one blue, just like we did to the previous shape. And I'm going to send that to the back by hitting control shift and the left bracket key. And I'm going to zoom in over this by holding alt and rolling up the mouse wheel. I'm just going to bring this over a little bit, maybe about that far. We want this to be sticking out here with the same thickness that this line is. We can just eyeball it to estimate. I think that's pretty good right there. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to click off of that to deselect everything. I'm going to grab the pen tool. And I'm going to snap to this point, snap to this point, bring the line up through here, and then snap it back to the starting point. Then grab the select tool, hold shift, click on this new blue shape we just created, and unite them together, just like that. Send that to the back by hitting control shift in the left bracket key. Click off of it to deselect everything, and then we're going to grab the pen tool and bring, snap this to the corner of this red arrow head right there, just like that. Hold shift to bring the line straight down through the uh, blue object there and go ahead and click. 
Now we can let go of shift and bring this object all around here like that. Grab the select tool, hold shift, click on the blue object and go to um, minus front. And again, we're gonna have to send that to the bottom one more time. So I'm gonna hit control, shift and the left bracket key. Now I'm gonna hold, I'm gonna press down on the space bar and click and drag the canvas over so we can do something over here. Let me click off of that to deselect everything. I'm going to take the um, pen tool, snap to this left corner of the uh, blue object, and then bring hold shift to bring this line out diagonally like that. And then go ahead and click. Then we can let go of shift and just finish this shape up around the outside. Grab the select tool, hold shift, click on the other blue object, and we're going to minus front. And now we can zoom out. I'm going to hold Alt and roll down the mouse wheel to zoom out. As you can see, we finished the structure, the shape of the actual design. Now we're just going to have to color it in. And for that, we're going to go back to this shape over here. I'm going to click on this, this duplicate that we made. I'm going to make that green. And I'm going to bring that to the front by hitting Control, Shift, and the right bracket key. And then I'm going to click and drag this over to the right while holding Shift to lock it onto the horizontal axis. I'm going to bring this over to about here like that. And if you notice, I'm going to zoom in on this point right here. You'll notice the edge of the green shape is like right near the point of this. It doesn't have to be exactly on the point of the arrowhead, but somewhere in that general area is pretty good. And once we've done that, I'm going to click on this red arrow shape right here and then hold shift and click on this red arrow head right there. We want to unite them both together by uh, clicking the button up here that says uh, Unite. And then I wanna hold Shift and click on the green shape. Actually, you know what, scratch that. Let's click off of the graphic. Click on just this red shape right here. I'm gonna hold Alt and click and drag this to create a copy. And then I'll hold Control and take this point and snap it onto this point over here. And then hold Shift and click on the green shape and click on the uh, Intersect button in the uh, Pathfinder menu. So we have we end up with something like this right here. And I want to take that and bring the opacity of that all the way up. And I want to make that white. So uh, let me zoom out a little bit. As you can see, we have everything set. The final step is to color everything in. So the first thing I'm going to do is color in this white shape right here. This is going to be kind of like a shine effect. I'm going to give this a gradient. I'm going to come over to the gradient menu. From the type drop down. I'm just going to choose linear. I'm going to double click this black stop over here. I'm going to make this white and I'm going to set the opacity of it down to zero. And then we could hit enter to close out of that. And now I'm going to grab the gradient tool, which is over here, or you could press G on the keyboard. And I'm going to bring the cursor outside of the right side of this line right here and just rotate this around. Oops. Yeah, just rotate it around, hold shift so we could lock it onto the vertical axis like that. And I'm going to take this bottom point and put this down here. And I'll take this top node and bring this up a little bit, just like that. And what I'll do now is go back to the select tool, click on the red shape right here. And I'm going to give this a radiant of purple to pink. So um, let me give this a linear gradient. I'm going to double click this stop over here to the left, this white stop. Uh, I'm going to come up here to this little icon to bring this drop down menu down. I'm going to choose RGB. And I'm just going to select a shade of pink, maybe something maybe something like that, and then hit enter to finalize it. Then I'll double click this stop over here on the right, put the opacity of that back up to 100%, and I'll bring this drop down over, I'll go over to uh, RGB, and I'm gonna choose purple, maybe something like that. Maybe a little darker. That works, and go ahead and hit enter. And again, I'm just going to hit G on the keyboard to get our gradient tool. I want to take this. Um, I want to take the darker, the darker stop and put it up top, and the lighter stop and put it at the bottom. So I'm going to put this down here. Actually, I have to rotate this around first. So go ahead and rotate this around. Hold Shift to lock it onto the vertical axis like that. I'll bring this down here towards the bottom. I'll take this node and bring that down towards the top of that shape. And the offset of this, I'm going to take this node in the center over here and just bring that up a little bit like that. And now we can grab the select tool. I'm gonna to do something similar for this blue shape right here. I'm gonna give that, I'm gonna go ahead and just, as a little shortcut, I'm gonna click on this little gradient right here. Then I'll go to the gradient tool. 
And I'm just going to rotate this around. I'm going to hold shift to lock it onto those axes like that. I want the dark part at the bottom and the light part up towards the top. I'm actually just going to bring this down a little bit, increase the offset, something like that's pretty good. And then again, we're going to do the same thing for these two shapes. So let me grab this select tool. I'll click on this blue shape, give that the same gradient we were just working with. Go back to the gradient tool. Um, for this one, we want the lighter shade up top and the darker one at the bottom. So as you can see, it's pretty good right there. I'm just going to change the offsetting a little bit. Maybe something like that's pretty good. Finally, we'll go to the select tool, click on this shape right here. And again, we're going to give this the same gradient. Only this time, we're going to go to the gradient tool. We're going to swap this around so that the darker shade is up top and the lighter shade is at the bottom. And what you could do now is grab the select tool and hold alt to and roll down the mouse wheel to zoom out. As you can see, we've created one of the arrows. So to create the other arrow now, I'm just going to create a duplicate, a duplicate copy of this and rotate it around. So I'll select all of that and then hold alt and just click and drag it. And then I'll just rotate it around, hold shift to lock it onto the horizontal axis like that. And I'll just put this over here like that and click off of it to deselect everything. And I'm just going to give this a different color now. So let me zoom back in. I'll click on this. Uh, let me change this to a shade of green. I'm going to double click that and make that green. Maybe something like that. Hit enter. I'll double click this, change this to a shade of blue. Like that. Maybe a little darker. That works pretty well. Go ahead and hit enter. And I'll do the same thing over here with the rest of these. I'm going to click on this shape right here. Let me give this a solid fill color so we don't have to keep going and recreating that gradient. I'll click on this to give this a solid fill color. And then I'll click on this gradient right here. I'll click on this object right here to bring this gradient back up. And then I'll go back to this shape and go ahead and click on that gradient to give that, 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 uh, that precise gradient instead of having to go and type in those precise colors again. So uh, let me grab the gradient tool. For this one, we want to rotate this around so that the darker shade is up top and the lighter shade is towards the bottom like that. Let me bring that up a little bit. Let me bring the offsetting down. We want more of the darker shade showing through in this one. And again, we'll go back to the select tool and do the same thing over here. Click on this shape, give it a solid fill, then click on this shape to bring that gradient back up into this box. And then we'll go back to this shape, give it that gradient and go to the gradient tool. Uh, for this one, we want the lighter shade at the bottom and the darker shade up top. So we're gonna have to rotate this around like that. Maybe change the offsetting a little bit. That works pretty well. There we go. And then we just have one more to, to fill in. We're gonna do the same thing here. I'm sure these steps are getting redundant by now, so I won't, I won't repeat myself with this one. I'll just do it. And to go to the gradient tool. And this one, it looks like it's already set. We want the darker shade at the bottom. So I'm just gonna offset that a little bit. Maybe I'll do that, bring this up. Okay, so we have that all colored in now. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the select tool and I'm gonna hold alt and roll down the mouse wheel to zoom out a little bit. And I'm gonna click and drag over all of this. And then I'm just gonna bring the cursor to outside of the uh, one of the, the corner nodes up here and just rotate it around and hold shift and rotate it counterclockwise one step just like that and then we can click off of it we can put it towards the center of the page and click off of it to deselect everything and as you can see we're finished we've created our circular arrows using adobe illustrator so if you have any questions let me know and as always thanks for watching